By default, Docker does not provide any connection points between your file system on your host machine and container running inside. Uh, so you don't have any connections. Uh, if you ha if you if you imagine uh, this is your computer, personal computer, and this is a file system where all the files uh, all the files located, and you have some containers running. Uh, you don't have uh, you don't have this connection uh, by default if you just run the container, uh, but uh, there is uh, a way uh, to organize uh, to to configure it explicitly to say Docker that you want uh, this point uh, of connection and why you might want it. Well, there are several reasons. Uh, maybe you want to create a backup of your container, or maybe you you want to have uh, a way to quickly transfer uh, a source code between your file system, uh, between the file system of your host to the container. Uh, and this allows you to avoid rebuilding image all the time. And it's useful during development process. Uh, so Docker provides several ways and uh, namely uh, there are bind mount uh, also we have a volumes and there are several more options but this one uh, seems a common one uh, so we'll talk about volumes a little bit later for now we're gonna uh, uh, for now we're gonna focus on bind mounts this is the simplest way to to organize this connection. Uh, so let's start. Uh, and to start with, uh, let's actually switch to a terminal. And I want to uh, I want to mention several commands that we're going to use today. Uh, let's say we <coughs> we run uh, our old image called uh, up here, and now that it's running is our image. Uh, let's imagine that uh, this is like a server uh, running somewhere with uh, with our application running inside. And we want to SSH into it to execute some commands. And you can do it with Docker. Docker provides a Docker exec command, uh, similar to SSH into a remote machine and executing something in the session in uh, a stage session and the syntax looks like so you type docker exec and then you need to provide <coughs> a name of your container let's actually uh, check it our container is called this way random name right and then you provide a command uh, that you want to execute and it could be anything like echo this way we will uh, SSH into uh, into our uh, container execute command and then exit so uh, it looks like so and to actually have a, 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 a continuous session like we will uh, in case of SSH uh, we need to execute, we need to start a bash interpreter uh, with command bin bash, or you can type uh, just a bash, but it won't work this way because um, we also need to specify uh, interactive uh, flag that says, uh, that says to Docker that we want to have a continuous session, and by running this command now we are indeed inside a container and we can uh, do whatever we, we will uh, in case of SSH. Uh, so here is, uh, for, for instance, here is our application that we've built previously and this is a root uh, folder of the system running inside, our, inside this container. So let's exit the session and uh, well now we are ready to actually talk about uh, mounts uh, to create a mount point well it's very easy 
first you need to create a folder uh, in your local system like let's say we want folder called test mount and inside this folder let's put some file right and now we're gonna use uh, this folder as a mount point and it will appear inside the container uh, so uh, let's remove our first container and uh, and create a new one waiting for it to be killed now here is a syntax to create a, a mount point, mount or well, um, bind mount. You provide a mount flag, and you specify parameters in form of in form like so. You specify the name of your of your argument. Uh, SRC uh, stands for source. SRC is a, a shortened version, and you provide a name f absolute pass to the folder and to provide an absolute pass uh, you need to specify you can get an absolute pass from uh, running this command and then you add a relative pass to the folder like so then you uh, to provide several more options uh, you type you you, uh, you type a comma and then use the same syntax to provide other uh, options. And we need to also uh, explicitly say that we use bind type, and there are several types like volume, uh, and volume is a default value, but if we uh, actually want to use binds, we need to specify it uh, explicitly. Uh, next option is, and the last one, is a point inside the container when we want to uh, our uh, folder to be bind to. And we specify it with destination uh, option or uh, just a shortened version DST. And let it be uh, slash test mount. Let's, uh, let's call it actually place for test mount and if this folder isn't yet created inside the, uh, inside the container it will be and then we just provide uh, usual options to run it in detached mode and a name let's say we want to run up latest version so now if we uh, get a SSH into it. It should contain our, uh, our folder. Let's try it. Docker exec it. Now we're here. Let's move on to a root folder. And here's our folder. Place for test uh, mount. And here's our file. Let me create a second uh, terminal session in my uh, local host. Uh, just to show you that uh, if you gonna change anything inside this folder on your local machine, it will also uh, uh, affect uh, any containers that, run, that uses this folder as a mount point. So let's create another uh, file here. And remember, now I am uh, inside my host machine. And now I'm gonna uh, switch to a container, a uh, container uh, bash session. And uh, we type ls to view files, and here's our file. Here's our new file. Uh, we don't have a less here let's just cut it and here's a new content and this uh, also works other way around so let's add another uh, another stream 
to our new file new line second txt or actually it will uh, remove a first line so we uh, we change the content now if we move uh, to a host session uh, we see a new content so this is uh, how easy it is uh, to uh, to bind uh, folders uh, to a container file system and uh, to yeah S uh, several more options here uh, so you can type inspect uh, well to view all the mounts of your container uh, use inspect command and it will show all the options for the container and some he somewhere here you'll see a mount section and in, the, in this section you you have a type uh, you have a type you have a source uh, from your local uh, system and a destination point also um, a, also a bind could be uh, read only and now we have read write uh, uh, enabled and to make it read on uh, read only uh, you provide let's exit uh, sage session here and to make it uh, read only you add another uh, option here called read only and now we won't be able to uh, to change our folder from inside the container let's try it Let's SSH into it, go to root, go to place, even though we have all these files and we can change them from local system, we won't be able to do so from a container. Let's concatenate uh, this string to the second file yeah, and we have this error saying that the uh, system is only, re uh, is only readable. So this way you can uh, uh, restrict what container can do to your uh, file system so that's about it and let's move on to the next uh, point and the next point yeah and uh, you need to remember this one uh, thing if you create a mount for a folder that doesn't exist on your uh, local machine you will get an error saying that uh, let, let me show you let's say we want to mount a folder that doesn't exist you'll get an error because it doesn't exist so uh, docker requires you to create uh, local uh, local folders uh, explicitly it won't automatically create it and another uh, point to remember uh, is if you create a, a volume, uh, not a volume, but a bind mount uh, for the folder that already exists inside the container, uh, a content of this folder, uh, a local content, uh, a content from local folder will override a content inside the container. So let me show you uh, that by creating uh, let's move to test mount and create a folder up and I'm gonna show you this by creating an app folder that already exists in app container and as you remember all our source code is located there and if we create uh, an empty folder and let's actually make it not empty but having one uh, one file up uh, if you remember we have uh, index dot js file uh, in our source code so if we create uh, this uh, up, up slash index js file having that has uh, this content and now uh, we're gonna uh, bind uh, this folder uh, 
uh, tool a, a place inside a contain container where our app lives namely in app folder it will overwrite uh, content inside the container and uh, then if we gonna uh, SSH into a container we won't see a source code instead we will see uh, our single file here let's try it yeah and actually it won't work this way because you see we have uh, an our application running uh, inside the container and we just replaced a source code from it so it failed to run and this way docker actually stops uh, this container and kills it so we cannot ssh into it uh, well how can we how can we check it uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's try to find another folder that we can replace inside a container we need a running one uh, let's say this one this is a appropriate app uh, uh, semicolon latest uh, let me ssh into it yeah we replaced this folder and this why uh, container failed Uh, let's say that we want to yeah maybe we want to replace a home folder it's not that important i think and we will be able no it's empty we need something not empty mm -hmm. maybe tmp folder yeah maybe a tmp folder seems fine if it has some content let's override a tmp uh, folder so we run our commands and instead of uh, specifying destinations as app let's specify tmp and now uh, maybe we have a running container uh, docker exec it okay and now if we go to a root and uh, move to tmp we don't have a folder that previously was here uh, something related to npm now we have just uh, a single file here because our local folder overrides uh, a container folder uh, so uh, and i think for now that's it about uh, about bind mount and for you to understand bind mount uh, are easiest to to use uh, with docker but usually people uh, are using volumes because they are much more powerful powerful than mounts you can do a lot of things with uh, mounts but uh, with uh, volumes uh, but we'll talk about it uh, on in the next video for, for now, that's it.